This morning on CBS 2 News, looking into the January 6th Capitol attack, what was revealed in the first public hearing. Plus, bullet holes left in Meridian homes after a shootout with police. What we know about the incident as of this morning. And police looking out for pride flags. The recent round of thefts and the impact some say it's having on our community. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this June 10th, 2022. Yeah, a very at least beautiful start to our day. Definitely feeling like su a summer night if you step outside in these early morning hours ahead of our sunlight. And it is going to be a very toasty day feeling like summer as we're kicking off our Friday. Nate, tell me more. That's right, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, it's mild, as you mentioned, uh, getting outside this morning. We are trending warmer than yesterday morning thanks to the southwest flow that's in place. Uh, clouds and radar showing. We do have some of the high in the sky clouds we're going to be dealing with again today. So a, a part of the cloudy conditions are expected for your Friday. Note moisture up north of us. Some of that will inch further south and we are expecting a little bit of moisture over some of the west central mountains. Let's kind of walk you through the forecast uh, uh, with the timeline as well as the map that you can see here. So as we get into uh, late morning, things are still pretty quiet. By afternoon, we do have a chance for some rain, maybe a thunder shower over the northern mountain areas. This is about five, six o'clock now expecting some rain again up over the west central mountains. Treasure Valley is going to be dry today. We're going to see a mix of sun and clouds out there. And then as we get into Saturday, that changes. All of us will start to see a risk for some showers and thunderstorms by the afternoon and evening. Uh, again, most of the moisture will fall in the mountain areas, but as we get into the weekend, yeah, we're going to see a chance of some rain and temperatures are going to fall. So today and Enjoy these warm, if not toasty temperatures, 81 already at lunchtime, and we're going to see a high in the upper 80s, even some low 90s in the valley throughout the afternoon. Sarah. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything is looking nice out there on this Friday morning. Good morning to you. We finally made it to the end of the week. Everything's looking good for your Friday morning commute. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we begin this morning in Washington, where the Congressional Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol, they held their first of several planned public, public hearings as of last night. House investigators, they say the violence at the Capitol was an attempted coup and placed squarely the blame on pre former President Trump. Now, CBS News correspondent Skylar Henry is on Capitol Hill this morning with the details. What I saw was just a, a war scene. In its first public hearing, the January 6th House Select Committee presented dramatic testimony from a U.S. Capitol Police officer who was injured in the violent insurrection. There were officers on the ground, um, you know, they were bleeding, they were throwing up. The panel blamed former President Trump for the events that day in 2021. We have a breach of the Capitol. And during the primetime televised hearing, aired a never before seen 12 minute video of the deadly riot. On the morning of January 6th, President Donald Trump's intention was to remain president of the United States, despite the lawful outcome of the 2020 election. January 6th was the culmination of an attempted coup. The committee of seven Democrats and two Republicans presented video statements from supporters of President Trump who faced criminal charges in the riots aftermath. I did believe, you know, that the election was being stolen um, and Trump asked us to come. The House panel showed Trump administration officials, including former Attorney General William Barr, saying they didn't believe Mr. Trump's baseless claims of a stolen election. I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was Several days of hearings are planned. Right now, we know of the next two, scheduled for this coming Monday and Wednesday. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. In Los Angeles today, the U.S. and other world leaders are closing out the Summit of the Americas. More critics have been speaking out about the U.S.'s decision not to invite leaders from Cuba, Venezuela and Nicaragua. The Biden administration says it didn't want authoritarian leaders at that event. Now, Venezuela's absence, it's notable when it comes to trade as well as gas prices. The country has the world's largest oil reserves, but sanctions limit its exports. Well, back here at home in the Treasure Valley, a man is in the hospital this morning after a shootout with police. Now, police say the incident began after a 
report of a shooting involving the Idaho Department of Correction. The suspect then stole a car and left the scene. Then police heard about a carjacking over in Eagle and started chasing a stolen pickup truck, eventually catching him out on Broadway. There was then an exchange of gunfire between the suspect and three officers from the Boise Police Department, along with two officers from the Meridian Police Department. The suspect was ultimately hit and officers began performing life-saving measures. Bullets, they did hit nearby cars and homes during the crossfire. It's unclear who shot at who first. The man was taken to a hospital. CBS2 is waiting to hear more about his condition this morning. Because the officer did shoot, the Ada County Critical Incident Task Force is now looking into what happened, including body camera footage. Well, this morning, Boise police want to know who's behind recent round of thefts. Dozens of pride flags are being stolen from Harrison Boulevard. It happened at least twice this week that we know of. The Pride Flag Foundation or the Pride Foundation flies these flags. They're put up on Harrison Boulevard for Pride Month. Boise police first learned about the stolen flags earlier this week. So far, about 35 flags have either gone missing or been damaged. It's also not the first time either. Pride flags were stolen last year, too. Now, members of the LGBTQ community, community say this, it sends a bad message to young people who may be struggling to come out, and it shouldn't be tolerated. We're going to be looking around to see what uh, our reactions are, and I, I hope that we can give an affirming uh, answer to that young person that, yes, they do belong and they do matter, uh, especially here in Boise and in Idaho. Boise City Council released a statement calling this theft unacceptable, saying the actions have no place in our city. Boise police say they're directing a number of resources to investigate this crime. If you do have any information on who may be responsible, give Boise police a call. Well, looking ahead, there's a lot happening at the Fort Idaho Center this summer. A stock horse show, a circus, and even Baby Shark Live. Now, all coming up in the next few weeks. And this fall, the Fort Idaho Center is actually celebrating its 25th year. Now, as we get ready, we're going to take you behind the scenes. And you actually won't believe how much work actually goes into the temp, keeping the temperature inside of the Fort Idaho Center. About 70 degrees, no matter our temperature outside. Whenever something is to go wrong or an alarm would go off, I actually have, have my phone hooked up to the automation system in order to tell me. So it doesn't matter where I'm in, where I'm at in the world, actually, I'll get the alarm. Gotta love technology. That's Kevin Hall. He's in charge of keeping the arena comfortable. And after six years, he has everything down to a science with chillers. Now, the big factor is how many people are actually inside the Ford Idaho Center and what they're doing. And join us in celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Ford Idaho Center. Upload your favorite photos of the event you've gone to at the arena. You can do that on IdahoNews.com. Just click the chime in link. We may use them this fall during the celebration and while you're on our website. Also, you can check out the secret tunnel that performers use before going on stage. Some cool stuff. And before we get to weather, we do want to introduce you to a very special pet in need of a loving forever home. That's right. It's time for our CBS2 Pet of the Week. Let's take a look. This is Bella. She's an eight-year-old Siberian Husky mix. She loves to go on adventures, whether it's on a leash or in a car. And if you've got other dogs, no worries. She's making all of her friends. Bella has lived with other large breeds before. Now, if you do want to meet Bella and those beautiful blue eyes or any other wonderful pets at West Valley Humane Society, you can make an appointment. We have a link. Just head to Idaho News. Dot com. Wow. She looks like a sweetheart. She's beautiful. I <laughs> She's love the beautiful. blue eyes. Yes, I do love it. And, and the and the fur and her her you say fur coat? Coat. I can't, her coat. Her yeah, coat. Yeah, her, her coat. coat. Her yeah. Coat. yeah. <laughs> I, I've had dogs. I don't have dogs currently, so I'm a little out of the loop. No, no, but. that is yeah. that is acceptable. But yeah, no, yeah. definitely probably a big shedder in the summer. Yeah. And I know with the heat headed our way, lots she of people. She might be needing a brush today. Yeah. Uh, some of the extra hair. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be a toasty one. Uh, we have temperatures heating up. Uh, let's kind of break down what we expect to see. So the focus uh, of this little uh, particular segment is going to be mainly on the mountains because we do have a significant storm system moving through. So now uh, we will see some good rainfall, I think, in the Treasure Valley over the weekend, but let's kind of talk about the severe weather outlook. This is for tomorrow. Today we do have a slight chance of a storm way up north uh, in the west central mountains or just clipping portions of Baker County and some of Valley County, but tomorrow uh, a better chance of some uh, thunderstorms over some of those northern mountain areas, including eastern Oregon, and the chances of moisture increase even more into Sunday. In fact, plan on it being a very soggy weekend. If you are going to be camping, uh, showers and thunderstorms starting tomorrow afternoon and continuing 
lingering throughout the day Sunday, lingering into Monday, even Tuesday next week. So maybe not the best weekend to be out camping, especially avoid uh, some of the smaller streams, the smaller creeks, areas that might be prone to flooding because we are expecting periods of heavy rain Saturday and Sunday in the mountain areas. And so those streams and rivers could rise quickly and also areas near uh, recent burn scars. We have possible mud and rock slides uh, with some of the heavier precipitation is expected to come down. So uh, as far as how much rain we're expecting to see again, I mentioned one to two inches of moisture in some of our mountain areas to the north. This particular model even showing over two inches of rain for McCall through early next week, about a half of an inch, maybe closer to an inch in some of the valley locations. So it's going to be a soggy weekend overall. Uh, timing it out for you a little bit. Again, most of the moisture to the north of us today, a slight chance over those northern zones for some rain showers. A uh, better chance as we get into Saturday, there's a good surge of moisture moving in as we get into the afternoon. The heaviest rain again just to the north of us, but there should be enough of a push of moisture on Sunday as a cold front moves through that all of us are going to see periods of rain, possibly thunderstorms, and it, uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty active day into next week with much cooler yeah. temperatures by Monday. Yeah, looking like a soaker for those mountains. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to get uh, yeah pr pretty wet out there. Again, the biggest concern is going to be a little bit of flooding if we are near those smaller streams and creeks and uh, near burn scars could have some rock slides and things. So yeah, be extra careful out in the mountains this weekend. Yeah, good thing to keep in mind. Yeah, let's take a live look outside this morning because everything is looking pretty good out there. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking out there this morning, headlights are there and we are looking at our Friday commute ahead of us. I hope you guys had a good week, ready to wrap up the work week and have a good weekend. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, the need for literacy here in Idaho, how you can get kids off on the right foot. And later, an Idaho robotics team headed to nationals. How these sixth graders are working to solve real world problems. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. That was surprisingly 6,000 Americans injure themselves with one of these every year. The keyword surprisingly, guys, because the answer, a pillow. Might want to go get yourself a new pillow this weekend if it's injuring you folks. All right, now for today's question, more money is spent on this hobby ooh, than any other. Okay, folks, what do we think it is? Five fifteen on your Friday. Welcome back. Local forecast. This one for the Emmett Valley. Uh, Emmett looking at about 89 today. It's going to be a scorcher out there. Uh, we do have some high cloud cover that's going to be moving through. So a mix of sun and clouds tonight. Partly cloudy, still mild 64 for an overnight low. So similar to where we are this morning. And then on Saturday, we do have a quiet start. But by the afternoon and evening, might see an afternoon shower or thunderstorm roll through about 83 for the high. The United Way Book Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Reading. It not only flexes your brain muscles, if I can talk, but it can also be a lot of fun. And a local nonprofit wants to make sure every kid here in the Treasure Valley has access to their own books in their own home. Now, CBS 2's Angela Kerndall explains the need. It's heartbreaking to know that not reading proficiently by the end of third grade can lead to such dire consequences for people in the future. 2021 data tracked by the state shows nearly half of Idaho K through third grade students aren't reading at their grade level. And during the pandemic, some of those kids have fallen even further behind. Research from the Annie E. Casey Foundation finds students who weren't proficiently reading by the end of third grade were four times more likely to drop out of high school compared to proficient readers. We don't want kiddos to drop out of school. We definitely don't want them to not have the, the basic fundamental skills to get a great job, to have a fulfilling career, to be able to enjoy all that life has to offer simply because they didn't have books when they were kiddos. And there's a big disparity in access to books at home between kids from lower income families and kids from wealthier families. The vast majority of low income kids don't own their own books right here in Treasure Valley. Reading with your child just a few times a week can make a big difference. That child will be twice as likely to score in the top 25% in reading just three times a week of reading. And if you do 15 to 20 minutes every day, you can see how that would really make a big difference in a child's life. But it does start as early as reading to your newborn. That's why CBS 2 and United Way are partnering together for an annual book drive 
to get books into the hands of some of the Treasure Valley's most vulnerable children. Something as simple as sharing the joy of a book through an opportunity like um, the, the book drive helps to create really lasting impact on something, again, so simple as the joy of a book. Angela Kerndall, CBS2 News. Leaders in Learning is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Well, a sixth grade East Cyber Mission team from Eagle is headed to the national finals. The team, cloudy with a chance of robotics, is the West region's finalists. The students now compete at the national competition. That's from June 17th to July 1st. Now, East Cyber Mission, it's a virtual STEM competition for sixth through ninth graders. Their coding knowledge just goes through the roof. It's, it's competitive. Um, but it's it's fun. It's in a great way, and we have developed friendships with kids across the world. With two to four person teams, the kids, along with their adult advisor, they have to try to solve a community problem. And you can click the Leaders in Learning tab to see more about them. You can find that on IdahoNews.com. I love to see all of this educational <laughs> work, especially you know that literacy with books and being yes. able to have books in your home. Were you a big reader as a kid? You know, Sarah. Okay, maybe I'd I'm like calling you say, out. Sorry. I'd like to say I was, but uh, yeah, I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> I, no, it's okay. That's okay. No, I just, I'm just kidding. I'm giving you a hard time. Uh, <laughs> no, I probably could have read more, and it would have benefited me more growing up. Well, but uh, yeah, I, I, I encourage, of course, those of see, you who are home, encourage, to not yes slide down the slippery summer slope. Don't do it, guys. Yeah, yeah. keep reading, keep reading. Yeah, keep I reading. Do, I do enjoy some good audiobooks, I will say that. And I wish, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, wish yes. I read more now as well. So something to uh, challenge yourself, I guess, too. <laughs> no, definitely. Another challenge, yeah. too, getting outside today. That, well, maybe challenge. not a challenge at all. Yeah, like, it you should know, be an easy draw be... with the nice weather that we're going to be seeing, at least here in the Valley today. So let's kind of break down more of the forecast. Mm -hmm. Beautiful as you kick off your Friday morning. You start to see hints of first light. Temperature-wise, yeah, we're uh, in the 60s this morning, so it feels very comfortable even without the sun up. Uh, southeast winds are light uh, three miles an hour and we're clear, if not mostly clear. We just have a few high clouds. Uh, for the rest of the day, again, we're getting toasty today. Warmer uh, highs today than yesterday's 86. We should be 89 degrees, close to 90, maybe hitting some 90s uh, in Mountain Home or in Ontario. Uh, normal high is 79. 83 on Saturday. We do have a few showers moving in late in the day, so plan on a slight chance of a storm, if not just some rain on Saturday. Uh, all areas will see uh, quite a a soggy day on Sunday, hoping for a good quarter, if not a half of an inch of precipitation in parts of the Treasure Valley. Mountain areas are going to get slammed with rain as we get into early next week. Rain chances continue on Monday with mostly cloudy skies, just 61 for the high. Yeah, big spring cool down still as we get into almost summer. Summer kicks off as we get into the next week on the 21st. So 75 on Wednesday should be a nice day. 88 on Thursday. Lots of sunshine as we get into next week as well. Maybe another storm lined up for next weekend. They just kind of be uh, they just kind of seem to be lined up for the weekends, unfortunately. So 72 in the mountains, a slight chance of rain this afternoon, 64 tomorrow. Showers and storms all weekend long in the mountain areas to the north. Possible flooding also as expected on Sunday. So a bit of a weather alert day on Sunday, 60 degrees down to 50 on Monday with showers continuing. Might see a little bit of a rain snow mix and the levels could drop down to 5,000 feet. Now as we're getting closer, kind of fine tuning some of the forecast. It's going to be chilly up in our mountain valleys as we get into Tuesday morning and then back up to a comfortable 75 by Thursday. But yeah, a bit of a roller coaster ride to get there. I know my focus though, the next 24 hours because <laughs> sunshine is what I am looking it forward to. Hot temperatures this morning heading out the door though. It's quiet. Yeah, things are really quiet, quiet this morning. Yeah, so, so yesterday I was out in the backyard and it was in the mid 80s and I was almost a little sweaty and I was like, you know what? I'm okay with this. It feels great. Yeah. I want some warm temperatures, finally. It, it's time. Yeah, it's, it's, time. It's, the time is now. All <laughs> yeah, right. right. Thank you, Nate. Let's take a live look outside at our traffic cams on I-84 for your morning commute. It is Friday, folks. You have made it. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all of our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, raising awareness for Alzheimer's how people are trying to reduce the stigma around those who suffer with the disease. And later, preparing for fire season. How intense heat in the West already has people preparing for what's to come. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. 
This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 524 on your Friday. Welcome back. It's Alzheimer and Brain Awareness Month and the Alzheimer's Association. They're highlighting common stigmas and misconceptions people have about that disease. Now, 6 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's right now, many including our own loved ones. And Dania Backus introduces us to a North Dakota man and his wife sharing their experience. Dale Rivard was diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment five years ago. He was 59 and a prosecutor. The first six months is when I deteriorated quite a bit. Um, it has affected my speech a lot. And as the years have progressed, um, 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 my short term memory is about the same. Dale and his wife, Mary Ann, want other people to know what it's like living with early stage Alzheimer's and other dementia. You get that diagnosis and it's pretty devastating. There's two ways to go. You can say, I'm done. I mean, it's so easy to sit in front of the TV, turn it on and wait to die, you know, or you can still fight and keep active. Monica Moreno with the Alzheimer's Association says the goal is to reduce the stigma and isolation patients feel. When people hear the word Alzheimer's disease, they immediately think of someone in the end stage of the disease. But the reality is that individuals living with Alzheimer's disease are still vibrant and, and can engage and live quality lives. When we were both working, we hardly went anywhere except on vacation, but now it's all mine. The couple travels and spends time with family. And they sing. With the chorus for people with dementia and their caregivers, the Unforgettables. I have problems speaking now. When I sing, there's nothing. I could be in a in my high school choir all over again. It is just wonderful. Dale says he wants to do the things he enjoys for as long as he can. Donya Backus, CBS News. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, it's our favorite day of the week. Meet Bella in CBS 2's Pet of the Week. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question, more money is spent on this hobby than any other. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, looking into the January 6th Capitol attack, what was revealed in the first public hearings. Plus, bullet holes left in Meridian homes after a shootout with police, what we know about the incident as of this morning. Plus, police looking out for pride flags, the recent round of thefts, and the impact some say it's having on our community. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. All right, folks, we made it to Friday. Let's kick off your Friday morning with your dog walking forecast as you're heading out early. Uh, again, sunrise uh, happening just after 6 o'clock, 6.03 this morning for Boise. So seeing first light already. Temperature-wise, we're in the low 60s, uh, pretty comfortable. Getting warm, though, pretty quickly by uh, lunchtime, 81 degrees. A mix of sun and clouds out there. We just have some high-in-the-sky clouds this morning. We're expected to see some moisture move through the area. Uh, over the northern mountain areas, a little bit of rain this afternoon. Here in the valley, just some of the cloud cover with very warm, if not toasty, temperatures. Let's kind of time out some of the uh, chance of rain over those northern mountain zones with future cast. Uh, best chance will be later this afternoon after about 2-3 o'clock. Could see some rain, maybe a thunderstorm as well. We all see a bit of a break, I think, uh, into much of Saturday. Uh, even over the northern mountain areas, the timeline showing rain. But most of us will see some showers pick up, I think, by tomorrow afternoon as that band of precipitation start, starts to shift further southward into southwest Idaho. So we could have some spotty showers tomorrow. Best chance will be on Sunday for all areas widespread rain. So grab that paddleboard, uh, kayak, whatever you want to do today out on the water, the pond, uh, some of the parks. It's going to be a gorgeous day. A little toasty this afternoon. Our high of 89 in Boise is expected. Yeah, love it. Perfect day to maybe take a quick dip in the water. Not for long, though. It is chilly. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBY. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A look at first line out there on I-84. Everything is looking good, both our main roads and secondary roads. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBY. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we do begin this morning in Washington, where the Congressional Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol held the first of 
several planned hearings last night. House investigators say the violence at the Capitol was an attempted coup and placed blame squarely on former President Trump. CBS News correspondent Skylar Henry is on Capitol Hill with details. What I saw was just a, a war scene. In its first public hearing, the January 6th House Select Committee presented dramatic testimony from a U.S. Capitol Police officer who was injured in the violent insurrection. There were officers on the ground, um, you know, they were bleeding, they were throwing up. The panel blamed former President Trump for the events that day in 2021. We have a breach of the Capitol. During the primetime televised hearing, aired a never before seen 12 minute video of the deadly riot. On the morning of January 6th, President Donald Trump's intention was to remain president of the United States despite the lawful outcome of the 2020 election. January 6th was the culmination of an attempted coup. The committee of seven Democrats and two Republicans presented video statements from supporters of President Trump who faced criminal charges in the riots aftermath. I did believe, you know, that the election was being stolen. Um, and Trump asked us to come. The House panel showed Trump administration officials, including former Attorney General William Barr, saying they didn't believe Mr. Trump's baseless claims of a stolen election. I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was Several days of hearings are planned. Right now, we know of the next two, scheduled for this coming Monday and Wednesday. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Well, in Los Angeles today, the U.S. and other world leaders are closing out the Summit of the Americas. Now, more critics have been speaking out about the U.S.'s decision not to invite leaders from Cuba, Venezuela or Nicaragua. Now, the Biden administration says it didn't want authoritarian leaders at that event. Now, Venezuela's absence is notable when it comes to trade and gas prices. It has the world's largest oil reserves, but sanctions do limit its exports. Well, back here in the Treasure Valley, a man in the hospital this morning after a shootout with police. Now, police say the incident, it began after a report of a shooting involving the Idaho Department of Correction. The suspect then stole a car and left. Then the police heard about a carjacking in Eagle and started chasing a stolen pickup truck, eventually catching him out on Broadway. There was then an exchange of gunfire between the suspect and three officers from the Boise Police Department along with two officers from the Meridian Police Department. The suspect was ultimately hit, and officers began performing life-saving measures. Bullets hit nearby cars and homes in the crossfire. It is unclear who shot at who first. The man was taken to a local hospital. CBS2 is waiting to hear about his condition this morning. Because officers did shoot their guns, the Ada County Critical Incident Task Force is looking into what happened that does include body camera footage. And this morning, Boise police want to know who's behind a recent round of thefts. Dozens of pride flags are being stolen from Harrison Boulevard. We know it happened at least twice this week. Now, the Pride Foundation flies these flags and they're put up on Harrison Boulevard for Pride Month. Now, Boise police first learned about the stolen flags earlier this week. They say so far 35 flags have either gone missing or been damaged, and it's not the first time either. Pride flags were stolen last year as well. Members of the LGBTQ community, they say this sends a bad message to young people who may be struggling to come out and it shouldn't be tolerated. We're going to be looking around to see what uh, our reactions are and I, I hope that we can give an affirming uh, answer to that young person that yes, they do belong and they do matter, uh, especially here in Boise and in Idaho. Boise City Council released a statement calling this theft unacceptable, saying the actions have no place in our city. Boise police say they're directing a number of resources to investigate this crime. If you have any information on who may be responsible, call Boise Police. And looking ahead, there's a lot happening at Ford Idaho Center this summer between a stock horse show, a circus and Baby Shark Live all coming up in the next few weeks. And later on this fall, the Ford Idaho Center is celebrating its 25th anniversary. As we get ready, we want to take you behind the scenes and you won't believe how much work goes into keeping the temperature inside about 70 degrees, no matter the temperature outside. Whenever something is to go wrong or an alarm would go off. I actually have have my phone hooked up to the automation system in order to tell me. So it doesn't matter where I'm in, where I'm at in the world, actually, I'll get the alarm. 
Yep, always on call. That's Kevin Hall. He's in charge of keeping the arena comfortable. Now, after six years, he has everything down to a science, he says, with chillers. Now, the big factor is just how many people are inside the arena and what they're doing. And we want you to join us celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Ford Idaho Center. Upload your favorite photos of events you've gone to at the arena. You can do that at IdahoNews.com and just click the chime in tab. We may use them later on this fall during the celebration. And while you're on our website, check out the secret underground tunnel that performers use before going out on stage. Pretty cool stuff. Well, another anniversary coming up as well. The Western Idaho Fair turning 125. And to celebrate CBS2, we're helping them raise money for the Idaho Food Bank. We're asking you to donate $125 in honor of those 125 years. The food bank can actually stretch every single dollar into four meals. Now, summer is one of the hardest times for Idaho families struggling to buy food. To find a link to donate, you can just head on over to our website. And before we get to weather, we want to introduce you to a very special pet in need of a forever home. That's right, it's our CBS2 Pet of the Week. We want you to meet Bella. She's an eight-year-old Siberian Husky mix, loves going on adventures, whether it's on a leash or in a car. And if you have other dogs, no worries there. She's all about making friends. Now, Bella has lived with other large dog breeds before. So if you want to meet Bella or any of the other wonderful pets at the West Valley Humane Society, make an appointment. We have a link on IdahoNews.com. It's a pretty dog. Oh, very pretty dog. Reminds me of a dog that we had growing up. His name is Klondike. Oh, Klondike. Uh, he was not a husky. He was a Malamute. A oh, wow, Malamute. yeah. So he was a big dog, a big coat. <laughs> big boy. And, uh, but yeah, she's she's beautiful. Didn't have the blue eyes that Bella has. Yeah, so. that's gorgeous. Don't uh, yeah, don't tell my boyfriend about that dog. We're going to be taking it home. So your Sarah likes to, to brush. Be uh, they're going to shed a lot with the temperatures warming up. She likes yeah. to give dogs uh, the brush that they need. So yeah, 90 degrees today, possibly. Yeah, we're going to be uh, toasty out there. Get ready for the heat today. We do have uh, other big changes is on the horizon as well. So uh, I want to show you the forecast starting off with the map. You can see the stormy weather up to the north of us. There's just a band of shower activity, uh, a line of it uh, that's going to stay north for the most part today of the Treasure Valley. We're going to see a little bit hit the West Central Mountains uh, with the ridge of high pressure that's in place. We get clockwise circulation and so we are seeing a, a mild, if not a toasty southwest flow into the area today. That's going to bump our temperatures up from yesterday closer to 90 as Sarah mentioned. Now that band of shower activity does start to inch its way further southward as we get into Saturday. And so all of us will be under a risk of some showers, possibly some storms, best chance being in the northern mountain areas. And then an area of low pressure is going to actually move in on Sunday. So we're going to keep a threat of moisture Saturday into Sunday. We're going to see that chance of moisture increase. In fact, should be a pretty soggy day overall as we're going to see showers and thunderstorms uh, heavy at times in the mountain areas on Sunday into Monday as the storm system rotates through Idaho. So this is going to be a prolonged uh, event as we get into early next week and temperatures are going to yeah, certainly get impacted as well. We're not going to be close to 90 at all as we get into early next week. So for the mountain areas, if you're heading out camping, there are some concerns with some of the heavy rain possible. In fact, plan on rain showers likely Saturday, Sunday, primarily even lingering into Monday, possibly Tuesday next week with this system and the concerns that we're looking at, of course, with the heavy rain Saturday, Sunday, some of those smaller streams and rivers could rise quickly. Uh, areas where we've had recent wildfire burns, burn scars, we could have uh, some possible mud or rock slides as well. So if you're going to be out camping, just avoid areas that might be prone to uh, flooding uh, or areas that might be prone to rock slides uh, or mud slides because that could be, of course, a big concern. Yeah, no, good advice. So maybe more of an RV camping than a tent camping yeah, weekend, guys. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> or maybe you're going to stay home and maybe try again next week, right? Yeah, no. If it's going to be a pretty soggy one. But yeah, tonight, tomorrow, if you're going to go camp tonight into Saturday, it looks pretty great. There we go. You heard it here first, guys. Let's take a look outside this morning because News Talk KBOI and CBS 2 News, we bring at team traffic all morning long. Yeah, look out there this morning. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you're having a good start to your morning. If you are just waking up, I hope that it is a, you know, a good start. Everything looking good out there on the roads. When you do eventually have to get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And don't forget about our question of the day. The question is more money is spent on this hobby than any other. Oh, wow. I Expensive know. Expensive <laughs> hobbies. Ooh, there could be so many. I See, okay, the immediate one that went into my mind was um, 
polo because you have to buy a horse or oh, speedboat okay. racing you gotta buy a boat well a hobby and a sport i guess See, you're, what, what you're where lateral. yeah where's the line okay i was thinking video games oh yeah that can be expensive because everything especially nowadays we were talking about how in the past with someone i was speaking about how you just bought the game and you had the game and you could play all the game now you have to buy the app and then in the app there are other purchases on top oh, yes. of the app purchase dangerous yes they just keep accumulating <laughs> so maybe video gamers i don't know especially for the little ones yeah i was yeah. talking earlier um my family Family's really big into trap shooting, oh, so uh, that's guns an expensive, are expensive one. Ammunition, <laughs> no ski, doubt. Yeah. Ooh, Darren says collecting guitars. Oh yeah, that can ring you up real quick. Oh wow, how about cars? Maybe you're a car oh, collector. Or, yes. Oh yeah. I uh, yeah. There Berlin, you go. Berlin antique automobiles. There. They are beautiful up in up in Cordell, or no Sandpoint, Idaho. We had lost in the 50s, and every year Ooh. we'd go up there and check out all the old cars. The so old if cars? we do. I think we have classic car stuff down here as oh, well. Oh, sure. I'd love oh, to know sure. more about that. I actually so, had a neighbor yeah. growing up uh, in Utah. He he would restore 69 Mustangs. Ooh, so he oh, had at least stop. three or four Boss 30, uh, let's see, uh-oh. Three oh, not three oh one. Uh, what bus? Uh, what bus things were they? I can't remember. Nope, it's okay. Yeah, you guys they know were amazing. Though. Help Nate out. <laughs> Ed, gold collecting. Yeah, that will that will uh, yeah, add up that's after a, that time. Just, yes, that's just always expensive. Gold's, just me and all my gold coins. That's probably the answer because yeah, gold's just outrageous. <laughs> that's the goal. So. You got to have the money to buy the gold coins all in right, the first guess, place. Ed. All right, thank you, Ed. If you think you know the answer, still lots of opportunities to guess. Just head on over to our Facebook page or Twitter, and we'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show. Right. Before for CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News This Morning, a heat wave has the West sweating. The high temps some are expected to reach and the dangers that may come with them. Five forty-six on your Friday. Welcome back. Local forecast for Meridian temperatures. Again, we're all heating up today in the upper 80s, right near 90 degrees. We do have uh, some high clouds that are going to be streaming through out of the southwest, so partly cloudy today. Another mild night uh, overnight, about 63. Should be pretty comfortable into Saturday morning. We do have temperatures falling a little bit, about 83 for the high. Plan on a slight chance of an afternoon shower or thunderstorm in Meridian as well. Thank you, Nate. Returning to fire season this morning, fire officials are giving their summer wildfire forecast for the West Coast, and it's not looking so hot. We're already four months ahead of where we should be. In Southern California, temperatures already soaring. Firefighters are asking neighbors to be prepared for fire danger year round and have an evacuation plan already in place. And flames aren't the only thing officials are warning us about. Temperatures are expected to soar in the western U.S. over the next few days. Places like Phoenix, Arizona, Vegas, Nevada and Palm Springs, California could hit 110 degrees. Now their advice is to do your best to keep cool. But Victoria Saha in Las Vegas explains not everyone has that luxury. Some don't have the luxury to work inside in a cool environment, particularly construction workers like those working on the sphere. They have to get the job done. I spoke to a worker on a project in the northwest part of the valley. You won't believe how many of these he's drinking a day. I drink like probably 15 bottles a day. Besides his construction tools, Mario Lopez says there is always a water bottle in his hand. Every 30 minutes I drink one or two. The company he works for provides a cooler full of water for their crew. Still gotta, you know, get the job done. And with multiple breaks in the shade, he's able to get his work done. He says his work shift is now 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., with noon being the toughest hour. I got like three or four chairs, you know, to keep uh, cool. But there's always danger. I spoke with Eric Bandella, who is currently studying the outside workforce in the heat with Desert Research Institute. We found that the most affected population is those who has five years or more working for the same employee. He also found that women working outdoors were more susceptible to heat-related illnesses. Before this study, he was looking into the mortality rate for Southern Nevada when it comes to heat. The number of cases of people dying because of extreme heat Increase it for less than 10 when we start the analysis to over 50. So no matter how long you have lived in the desert, you should always take extra precautions because you may never know how your body could react. Yeah, seven ounces every half hour. 
That's, 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 I mean, it's good to know that knowledge. Yeah. I didn't know that. So. You got to keep hydrated uh, yeah. with water. There were a few other drinks that maybe weren't, you know, going to keep you hydrated, but they should yeah. taste good, I guess. No, I commend their work outside. out there in that heat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, stay cool today. We've got a hot uh, day in store for us. Uh, not just very warm. Southwest flows in place. Looking at the Adventure Weather Radar Network, we'll talk more about temperatures here in just a second. Uh, we do have some moisture. You can see up to the northwest of us. So uh, much, much of Washington, portions of northern Oregon, seeing a little bit of light shower activity this morning. Uh, Adventuring this weekend today into early tomorrow is great, I think, for especially the southern tier of Idaho. As we get north up into the west central mountains, you're going to start to run into some rain later this afternoon. Here in the Treasure Valley, we have a chance of a storm tomorrow afternoon and evening, only about a 15 to 20 percent threat. Uh, temperatures are near 90 today, though, 83 tomorrow. We fall to 74 on Sunday, and then all of us are going to see an increased threat. Uh, some rain is likely uh, going to be falling on Sunday, possibly a thunderstorm. Chances of moisture linger into Monday. 61 will just be the high on Monday, so a big drop in temperatures, about 30 degrees cooler than today. Mid-60s on uh, Tuesday, partly cloudy. We warm back up pretty quickly, 75 on Wednesday and Thursday, 88 degrees for the high. Normal overnight low is still 53, so we're well above that this morning. On Friday for the mountains, 72. Plan on a slight chance of a shower uh, this afternoon. And again, we expect rain up north. The southern mountains will be dry. 64 on Saturday. Again, showers and storms across the north. Uh, southern mountains could see a few isolated showers. All areas will see rain, as I mentioned, on Sunday. Possibly some flooding. That's going to be a concern as we're expecting one to two inches of rain with this event Saturday evening through Monday. So a bit of a soaker, quite a bit of a soaker, especially. Uh, so the small rivers and streams could swell. Certainly could see some low-level areas uh, flood as uh, a lot of that moisture comes down and temperatures are are chilly. In fact, uh, just 50 for the high on Monday. Warming back up to 75 by Thursday next week. Well, today's going to be beautiful. Today's nice. And if we're Looks stepping nice. outside this morning, very mild. Yeah, we're about 10 degrees above normal. So okay. those low 60s are going to feel uh, more summer like out there this morning. Yeah, definitely. As soon as I stepped out the door immediately this morning, I was like, it feels like summer. <laughs> you can roll the windows down early. Love yeah, it. Looks great. All right, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring it. Team traffic all morning long. Taking a live look out there at I-84 this morning. All of our main roads, secondary roads looking good. So, yeah, not much to talk about. I'll get on with the show. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News, a shortage of hot sauce. Say it ain't so. Why Les Sriracha is going to be on store shelves. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 554 on your Friday. Welcome back. This is going to hit home for some of our hot sauce lovers this morning. Another shortage hitting our shelves. Candace Crone explains why Sriracha hot sauce may be a bit harder to come by. Like salt and pepper. You can put on almost anything and you still enjoy it. Not too spicy. The unique chili pepper taste of sriracha is a favorite among those who like to add a little spice to their food. But finding the green capped bottle with the rooster on the front might soon be a challenge. Hoi Fong Food, which makes sriracha, recently announced in a letter it's temporarily halting production of the hot sauce and its two other condiments due to weather conditions affecting the quality of chili peppers. The company had already been dealing with a shortage of chili pepper inventory. We found bottles still on the shelves at this supermarket in Alhambra, but the store manager anticipates not for long. Right now, a lot of people are asking to me about the sriracha. I have a one customer. He have he owned the the sushi restaurant. Uh, he worried about that. You know, we try our best to stock up and make sure that you know all the customers are fed, even with the shortage. Over at Number One Kazoku in San Gabriel, they're already considering different hot sauce substitutes if they can't get their hands on what they need. For us, we're not worried yet because we only use so much. That doesn't really impact our sales per se, but I mean, if they're gone for a very long period of time, I think we probably have to stick with the alternative. And if that doesn't work, then it's gonna be a little more hard to find any other substitutions to please our customers and clientele. The company didn't immediately respond to our request for comment. Victor Tran said he hopes the shortage doesn't last too long. Actually, I'm low at home right now. <laughs> I haven't been to the market, so I, I wouldn't know, but I hear about it. So maybe I might run to the market, try to just snag up a couple of bottles, bring it home. <laughs> Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, it's our favorite day of the week, Pete Vela in CBS 2's Head of the Week. Plus, the need for literacy in Idaho, it is high. 
how you can help kids get off on the right foot. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News. Looking into the January 6th Capitol attack, what was revealed in the first public hearings. Plus bullet holes left in Meridian homes after a shootout with police. What we know about the incident as of this morning. Plus police looking out for pride flags. The recent round of thefts and the impact some say it's having on our community. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is a beautiful live look of downtown Boise on this June 10th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. It is finally Friday, folks, and we are waking up to first light this morning. A beautiful start to your day. And Nate, we're heating up as we kick off our Friday. Yes, we are. And yeah, sunrise just moments away. 603 is expected to be sunrise here in Boise. Uh, yeah, we do have a few high clouds out there. Should generate a gorgeous sunrise. This is a look from the city of Boise air quality camera. It is a delayed image, though. Uh, it looks like by about half hour. So much brighter out there this morning than what we're seeing. Temperature wise, it looks like we're at 61 in Boise. So still comfortable. Ontario 60, a little cooler in Nampa 57. Good morning and 50 degrees still up in the Long Valley. We do have some of those high clouds, as I mentioned, moving in throughout the day today. Even some light rain up north this afternoon, possibly a thunderstorm. Timing it out for you with future cast. Again, generally quiet weather for the valley and areas southward. Or, uh, we're looking at very dry, very quiet conditions. But again, just our northern mountain areas, the west central mountains, Baker County have a risk of showers this afternoon, possibly some storms. The band of precipitation does shift further south into Saturday. All of us could see a few showers tomorrow, possibly a storm. Most of the models keep it pretty quiet for the Treasure Valley overall. Just a slight chance of a few hit or miss showers, but that chance will uh, increase as far as aerial coverage on Sunday. So get outside today, maybe grab the paddleboard kayak. It's going to be a hot one for us about 10 degrees above average should be 89 here in town this afternoon. Sarah. Thank you, Nate. It's going to be a beautiful day. <laughs> CBS 2 News and News Talk KDOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out at I-84 this morning. Everything looking pretty good out there. Uh, smooth sailing for everyone, not only on our made roads, but also our secondary roads. Hope you all are having a good start to your Friday morning, folks. We made it. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we do begin this morning in Washington, where the Congressional Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol held the first of several planned public hearings last night. House investigators, they say the violence at the Capitol was an attempted coup and placed that blame squarely on former President Trump. Now, CBS News correspondent Skylar Henry is on Capitol Hill this morning with details. What I saw was just a, a war scene. In its first public hearing, the January 6th House Select Committee presented dramatic testimony from a U.S. Capitol Police officer who was injured in the violent insurrection. There were officers on the ground, um, you know, they were bleeding, they were throwing up. The panel blamed former President Trump for the events that day in 2021. We have a breach of the Capitol. During the primetime televised hearing, aired a never before seen 12 minute video of the deadly riot. On the morning of January 6th, President Donald Trump's intention was to remain president of the United States, despite the lawful outcome of the 2020 election. January 6th was the culmination of an attempted coup. The committee of seven Democrats and two Republicans presented video statements from supporters of President Trump who faced criminal charges in the riots aftermath. I did believe, you know, that the election was being stolen. Um, 
And Trump asked us to come. The House panel showed Trump administration officials, including former Attorney General William Barr, saying they didn't believe Mr. Trump's baseless claims of a stolen election. I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was Several days of hearings are planned. Right now, we know of the next two, scheduled for this coming Monday and Wednesday. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Well, back here in the Treasure Valley this morning, a man is in the hospital after a shootout with police. Now, police say the incident, it began after a report of a shooting involving the Idaho Department of Correction. The suspect then stole a car and left. Then they heard about a carjacking out in Eagle and started chasing a stolen pickup truck, eventually catching him out on Broadway. There was then an exchange of gunfire between the suspect and three officers from the Boise Police Department along with two officers from the Meridian Police Department. The suspect was ultimately hit, and officers began performing life-saving measures. Now, bullets hit nearby cars and homes during the crossfire. It is unclear who shot at who first. The man was taken to a local hospital. CBS2 is still waiting to hear more about his condition this morning. And because officers did shoot, the Ada County Critical Incident Task Force is looking into what happened, including body camera footage. And this morning, Boise police want to know who's behind a recent round of thefts. Now, dozens of pride flags have been stolen from Harrison Boulevard, and we know it happened at least twice this week. Now, the Pride Foundation flies those flags. They're put up on Harrison Boulevard for Pride Month, which is June. Now, Boise police first learned about the stolen flags earlier this week. So far, 35 flags have gone missing or have been damaged, and it's not the first time either. Pride flags were stolen last year, too. Members of Boise's LGBTQ community say this sends a bad message to young people who may be struggling to come out, and it shouldn't be tolerated. We're going to be looking around to see what uh, our reactions are, and I, I hope that we can give an affirming uh, answer to that young person that, yes, they do belong and they do matter, uh, especially here in Boise and in Idaho. The Boise City Council released a statement calling the theft unacceptable, saying the actions have no place in our city. Boise police say they're directing a number of resources to investigate this crime. If you do have any information on who may be responsible, give a call to Boise Police. And looking ahead today, there's a lot happening at the Ford Idaho Center this summer. A stock horse show, a circus, and even Baby Shark Live. That's all coming up in the next few weeks. But later on this fall, the Ford Idaho Center is celebrating 25 years. And as we get ready, we're taking you behind the scenes of the Ford Idaho Center. And you won't believe how much work goes into keeping temperatures inside the building at 70 degrees, no matter the temperature outside. Whenever something is to go wrong or an alarm would go off. I actually have have my phone hooked up to the automation system in order to tell me. So it doesn't matter where I'm in, where I'm at in the world, actually, I'll get the alarm. Yeah, this is Kevin Hall. His work, as you just heard, is never done. He's the one in charge of keeping the arena comfortable. And after six years, he has everything down to a science with what he calls his chillers. Now, the big factors are how many people are inside the building and what they're doing. So you join us celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Ford Idaho Center. Upload your favorite photos or events you've gone to at the arena or head to IdahoNews.com to Click chime in to be able to submit those, and we may use them later this fall during the celebration. And while you're on our website, check out the secret underground tunnel that performers use before going on stage. It's pretty cool, too. So before we get to weather, we do want to introduce you to a very special pet in need of a loving forever home. Yeah, that's right. It's our CBS2 Pet of the Week. Meet Bella. She's an eight-year-old Siberian Husky mix who loves to go on adventures, whether it's on the leash or in a car. And if you are you have other dogs, no worries. She's all about making friends. Now, Bella has lived with other large breed dogs before. If you do want to meet Bella or any of the other wonderful pets at West Valley Humane Society, you can make an appointment. We do have a link on IdahoNews.com. Beautiful dog. Oh, I love those blue eyes, as you mentioned before. She's, I love yeah, it. she's a sweetheart. So. Looks like she'd enjoy yeah, running around the Boise River, kind of like myself later on today. Yeah, she might <laughs> want to di take a dip in the river with uh, the uh, hot temperatures that we're going to be seeing out there. So, yeah, let's kind of break down some of the forecast real quick, what we're expecting to see outside on your Friday. Uh, note there is quite a bit happening. This is the Futurecast map. We have high pressure in place over much of southern Idaho with stormy weather up to the north of us. Uh, a nice line of showers uh, uh, along, a, uh, along the jet stream, essentially. 
essentially as we're expecting some moisture to continue to stream in out of the southwest. Uh, with a high pressure ridge, we get clockwise circulation around the ridge, and so we are seeing uh, with the ridge in place that southwest flow into the Idaho, into southwest Idaho, and that's what's driving up our temperature. So yesterday was quite warmer than uh, what we saw on Wednesday. Mid 80s were uh, seen across the valley. We're expecting upper 80s and low 90s today. Note that band of precipitation does start to inch uh, towards us here in southwest Idaho, so southward as we're expecting the ridge to weaken into the weekend. We're going to see some light rain over the mountain areas to the north today, possibly a, a thunderstorm, and then all areas will start to see some active weather into Saturday afternoon and Sunday. The reason being there's another area of low pressure that's going to be riding through that southwest flow, bringing enough instability and cold air with it that we're going to start to see some uh, fairly widespread shower activity on Sunday. Heavy rain possibly at times with some of these storms that are going to be moving through. There's quite a bit of moisture moving in as that system's tapping into subtropical air. And so the storm is going to eventually uh, rotate right through the Gem State impact our weather pattern all the way into next week. So chances of moisture for the mountains. Camping forecast. If you're going to be heading out camping this weekend, yeah, best to uh, stay to maybe some of the RV parks, places that aren't uh, going to be prone uh, to maybe some minor flooding. Some of the small streams and reservoirs are going to swell, especially with one to two inches of rain forecast over those northern mountain areas and of course areas near burn scars where we've had recent wildfires could have some possible mud or rock slides so yeah take it easy out there this weekend plan on much cooler temperatures and maybe buckets of rain up north uh, yeah. Saturday night into Sunday even Monday next week yeah good to keep in mind if you're traveling if you're staying down here in the Treasure uh, Valley though yeah we have some showers of course Saturday into Sunday uh, if you head south less chances of moisture though so all right heading south for the weekend all right thank you Nate CBS <laughs> yeah. 2 News and News Talk KBOI we bring you team traffic all morning long let's get a check of what's happening out there this morning from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien good morning Ron Good morning, Sarah. We're doing great, folks. Getting ready to get out the door. If you do have to uh, get out on a early Friday, it's very light traffic. I-84, you can see in some of our uh, camera shots, everything good in those areas. And that goes for the construction zone, too. Uh, Caldwell Nampa stretch or Highway 44, for that matter, the widening between Highway 16 and Linder. No backups this time of the morning. From the News Talk KBOI traffic studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, the need for literacy in Idaho. How to help get kids off on the right foot. Plus, an Idaho robotics team is headed to nationals. How these sixth graders are working to solve real world problems. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Surprisingly, 6,000 Americans injure themselves with one of these every year. The answer, a pillow. All right, guys, stay safe out there. Maybe get yourself a new pillow this weekend if you're getting injured. Today's question is more money spent on this hobby than any other. All right, folks, thinking caps on. What is it? Six fourteen on your Friday. Welcome back. Local forecast this is for the Emmett Valley. Temperatures today about eighty nine degrees, so getting toasty out there. We do have some high clouds streaming in out of the southwest, uh, so quite a bit of sunshine, but we will have a little bit of cloud cover as well. So mix of sun and cloud. Sixty four overnight. Partly cloudy, so still mild into Saturday morning. There is a chance of some shower activity though tomorrow afternoon, possibly a thunderstorm, and temperatures will dip to about eighty three for the high. The United Way Book Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Reading. It not only flexes your brain muscles, but it also can be a lot of fun. And a local nonprofit wants to make sure that every kid here in the Treasure Valley has access to their very own books. Now, CBS 2's Angela Kernel explains the need. It's heartbreaking to know that not reading proficiently by the end of third grade can lead to such dire consequences for people in the future. 2021 data tracked by the state shows nearly half of Idaho K through third grade students aren't reading at their grade level. And during the pandemic, some of those kids have fallen even further behind. Research from the Annie E. Casey Foundation finds students who weren't proficiently reading by the end of third grade were four times more likely to drop out of high school compared to proficient readers. We don't want kiddos to drop out of school. We definitely don't want them to not have the, the basic fundamental skills to get a great job, to have a fulfilling career, to be able to enjoy all that life has to offer simply because they didn't 
didn't have books when they were kiddos. And there's a big disparity in access to books at home between kids from lower income families and kids from wealthier families. The vast majority of low income kids don't own their own books right here in Treasure Valley. Reading with your child just a few times a week can make a big difference. That child will be twice as likely to score in the top 25% in reading just three times a week of reading. And if you do 15 to 20 minutes every day, you can see how that would really make a big difference in a child's life. But it does start as early as reading to your newborn. That's why CVS 2 and United Way are partnering together for an annual book drive to get books into the hands of some of the Treasure Valley's most vulnerable children. Something as simple as sharing the joy of a book through an opportunity like um, the, the book drive helps to create really lasting impact on something, again, so simple as the joy of a book. Angela Kerndall, CBS 2 News. Leaders in Learning is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. A sixth grade e-cyber mission team from Eagle is headed to the national finals. The team, cloudy with a chance of robotics, is the West region's finalist. The students will now compete in the national competition on the 17th to July 1st. E-cyber mission, it's a virtual STEM competition for sixth through ninth graders. Their coding knowledge just goes through the roof. It's, it's competitive. Um, but it's, it's fun, it's in a great way, and we have developed friendships with kids across the world. With two to four person teams, the kids, along with their adult supervisor, they have to try to solve a community problem. And you can head on over to IdahoNews.com and click on our features, Leaders in Learning tab, to learn more about Cloudy with a Chance of Robotics. What a cute name. I do like that. I do. Yeah, that was very, <laughs> uh, a good play on words there. Adorable. Boy, kids are so smart these days, especially when it comes to, I, yes. I took a coding class in college and I hated it. It's, it's hated rough it. out so, there, yeah. Yeah, kids it's that cool can get it now, uh, yeah, kudos to them. So I'd like to see the success that they're having here locally. So. Yeah, always amazes me. And another thing that's amazing me is our temperatures oh, today yeah. once again. Success with yeah. the forecast today. It looks pretty great, uh, for the valley at least. Uh, outside this morning, beautiful. Let's take a look from mm -hmm. the studio uh, camera downtown. Yeah, so we've got uh, lots of blue sky mixed with a little bit of cloud cover out there. Some high clouds streaming in out of the southwest. Temperatures are comfortable though. We're 61 degrees uh, here in Boise. Southeast winds have, pick up a little bit, have picked up a little bit at 10 miles per hour, but uh, no significant winds expected today uh, on the light side, 10 miles an hour or less throughout the day uh, here in the valley. 89 for the high this afternoon, so getting toasty. We're uh, not quite at 90. I'd be surprised if we did hit 90. Models have been kind of back and forth. Uh, between 89, 90, some valley locations, Mountain Home, Ontario should hit 90, 91. Uh, but I think we'll be just shy of that for Boise with the mix of sun and clouds. We drop to 83 tomorrow. Moisture starts to increase Saturday afternoon and evening, especially into Sunday as a cold front's going to march through, lingering into Monday next week. Temperatures fall to 74. Could be a pretty soggy day on Sunday, especially in our mountain areas to the north. Hoping for a good half of an inch of rain in some of the valley locations. 61 though Monday, so chilly as we kick off the next Next work week 65 on Tuesday, 75 on Wednesday, and about 88. So getting toasty again uh, Thursday next week, almost 10 degrees above average. Friday in the mountains, again, we have some moisture up north, so some light showers over the northern mountain areas. The southern areas will be dry, 72 for the high today, 64 uh, for your Saturday. Plan on showers and thunderstorms across all mountain areas tomorrow. Uh, in fact, could even see some possible flooding in some areas on Sunday as we're expecting widespread rain. Heavy at times, we dropped to 50 on Monday. Rain showers expected to continue, possibly a thunderstorm in the afternoon with a slight chance of some rain snow showers early Tuesday as temperatures fall to 36. We could see snow levels hover all the way down to about 5,000 feet uh, in the uh, early part of next week before we rebound back to about 75 with drier weather Wednesday. Thursday as well. Yeah, I love that forecast. Not getting too hot. Yeah, not getting too hot today. Not bad. And it's short lived, unfortunately. So soak up what uh, warmth you can out there because it's a little chilly next week. Yep, you heard it here first, guys. I definitely <laughs> will be doing that. Thank yep. you, Nate. Mm -hmm. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Taking a live look out there this morning. Let's get a check of what's happening from the News Talk Traffic Center's Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, how's it looking? We are looking good. Everything is quiet. Good morning, folks. Getting ready to get out the door. No issues. 84. Don't even have the emerge slowdowns going at this point in uh, Meridian or Nampa, per se, where we sometimes get them. Uh, yeah, very quiet start. Even away from the freeways, traffic volumes are light. We're doing great. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan.
Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, raising awareness for Alzheimer's, how people are trying to reduce the stigma around those who struggle with the disease. And later, preparing for fire season, how intense heat in the West already has people preparing for what's to come. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 624 on your Friday. Welcome back. It's Alzheimer and Brain Awareness Month and the Alzheimer's Association. They're highlighting common stigmas and misconceptions people have about the disease. Now, six million Americans are living with Alzheimer's, many including our own loved ones. Daniel Backus introduces us to a North Dakota man and his wife who are now sharing their experience. Dale Rivard was diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment five years ago. He was 59 and a prosecutor. The first six months is when I deteriorated quite a bit. Um, it has affected my speech a lot. And as the years have progressed, um, 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 my short term memory is about the same. Dale and his wife, Mary Ann, want other people to know what it's like living with early stage Alzheimer's and other dementia. And you get that diagnosis and it's pretty devastating. There's two ways to go. You can say, I'm done. I mean, it's so easy to sit in front of the TV, turn it on, and wait to die, you know? Or you can still fight and keep active. Monica Moreno with the Alzheimer's Association says the goal is to reduce the stigma and isolation patients feel. When people hear the word Alzheimer's disease, they immediately think of someone in the end stage of the disease. But the reality is that individuals living with Alzheimer's disease are still vibrant and, and can engage and live quality lives. When we were both working, we hardly went anywhere except on vacation, but now it's all mine. The couple travels and spends time with family. And they sing. With the chorus for people with dementia and their caregivers, the Unforgettables. I have problems speaking now. When I sing, there's nothing. I could be in a in my high school choir all over again. It is just wonderful. Dale says he wants to do the things he enjoys for as long as he can. Donya Backus, CBS News. Other families, they say they want people to know that you can ask a person how they're doing and not their caregiver. Also talking around someone with early stage in the disease can actually make them feel more isolated and alone. Some good tips to remember. Now still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, it's our favorite day of the week. Meet Bella in CBS 2's Pet of the Week. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question, more money is spent on this hobby than any other. All right, folks, what is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, looking into the January 6th Capitol attack, what was revealed in the first public hearings. Plus bullet holes left in Meridian homes after a shootout with police. What we know about the incident as of this morning. And police are looking out for pride flags, the recent round of thefts and the impact some say it's having on our community. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. All right, folks, good Friday morning. Get outside. Dog walking forecast looking phenomenal as you get up uh, early. Sun is up and we've got lots of uh, sunshine to deal with this morning. Temperatures in the low 60s. We're warm, uh, warming up quickly through lunchtime. 81 is expected to be the temperature around noon. Uh, still a mix of sun and clouds. Sunrise was, sunrise was at 6.03, so the earliest sunrise is happening now as summer solstice is just around the corner on the 21st this month. So that's when the days are going to slowly start to get shorter. So we're experiencing the most amount of daylight right now.
right now uh, with these uh, almost summer months, or summer days, I should say. Clouds and radar showing there's a little bit of moisture up to the north and west of us. Primarily, the moisture will stay north of the Treasure Valley today. It will clip, or north of our area today, it will clip those west central mountain areas with some light rain. It looks like throughout the afternoon, possibly a thunderstorm as well. Uh, otherwise, the valley is dry today. The southern mountain areas are going to be dry as well. All of us will start to see bigger changes, though, Saturday. More moisture will bring showers, possibly some thunderstorms to the area uh, on your Saturday afternoon and evening. Adventure cast again, 81 at noon, and then a high. Yeah, we're toasty today. Upper 80s, even some low 90s possible in the valley. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News and Newstalk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. Ha, everything is good. Very mild, but it is going to get hot, as Nate said. Not much to talk about. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we begin this morning in Washington, where the Congressional Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol held the first of several planned public hearings last night. Now, House investigators, they say the violence at the Capitol was an attempted coup and placed blame squarely on former President Donald Trump. CBS News correspondent Skylar Henry is on Capitol Hill this morning with details. What I saw was just a, a war scene. In its first public hearing, the January 6th House Select Committee presented dramatic testimony from a U.S. Capitol Police officer who was injured in the violent insurrection. There were officers on the ground, um, you know, they were bleeding, they were throwing up. The panel blamed former President Trump for the events that day in 2021. We have a to the Capitol. During the primetime televised hearing, aired a never before seen 12 minute video of the deadly riot. On the morning of January 6th, President Donald Trump's intention was to remain president of the United States, despite the lawful outcome of the 2020 election. January 6th was the culmination of an attempted coup. The committee of seven Democrats and two Republicans presented video statements from supporters of President Trump who faced criminal charges in the riots aftermath. I did believe, you know, that the election was being stolen um, and Trump asked us to come. The House panel showed Trump administration officials, including former Attorney General William Barr, saying they didn't believe Mr. Trump's baseless claims of a stolen election. I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was Several days of hearings are planned. Right now, we know of the next two, scheduled for this coming Monday and Wednesday. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Back here in the Treasure Valley, a man is in the hospital this morning after a shootout with police. Now, police say the incident began after a report of a shooting involving the Idaho Department of Correction. The suspect then stole a car and left the scene. Then police heard about a carjacking out in Eagle and started chasing a stolen pickup truck, eventually catching him on Broadway. There was then an exchange of gunfire between the suspect and three officers from the Boise Police Department along with two officers from the Meridian Police Department. The suspect was ultimately hit, and officers began performing life-saving measures. Bullets hit nearby cars and homes during the crossfire. It is unclear who shot at who first. The man was taken to a local hospital. CBS2 is still waiting to hear more about his condition this morning. Because officers did shoot their guns, the Ada County Critical Incident Task Force is looking into what happened. That does include body camera footage. And this morning, Boise police want to know who's behind a recent round of thefts over on Harrison Boulevard, where dozens of pride flags were stolen. It happened at least twice this week that we know of. Now, the Pride Foundation flies these flags. They're put up on Harrison Boulevard for pride. Pride Month. Boise Police, they first learned about the stolen flags earlier this week. So far, about 35 flags have gone missing or have been damaged, and it's not the first time either. Pride flags were stolen last year as well. Members of the LGBT community here in the Treasure Valley, they say this sends a bad message for young people who may be struggling to come out, and it shouldn't be tolerated. We're going to be looking around to see what uh, our reactions are, and I, I hope that we can give an affirming uh, answer to that young person that, yes, they do belong and they do matter, uh, especially here in Boise and in Idaho. 
Boise City Council released a statement calling the theft unacceptable, saying the actions have no place in our city. Boise police say they're directing a number of resources to investigate this crime. Now, if you have any information on who may be responsible for this, give Boise police a call. Well, looking ahead, there's a lot happening at the Ford Idaho Center this summer from a stock horse show, a circus, even Baby Shark Live, and that's just in the next few weeks. Later this fall, the Ford Idaho Center, it's celebrating 25 years. And as we get closer, we're taking you behind the scenes. Now, you won't believe how much work actually goes into keeping the temperature inside 70 degrees, no matter our temperature outside. Whenever something is to go wrong or an alarm would go off. I actually have have my phone hooked up to the automation system in order to tell me. So it doesn't matter where I'm in, where I'm at in the world, actually, I'll get the alarm. That's Kevin Hall. His work never stops. He's in charge of keeping the arena comfortable. After six years, he has everything down to a science with chillers. Now the big factors are how many people are inside the building and what they're doing. Well, before we switch on over to weather, we want to introduce you to a very special pet in need of a forever home. Yeah, that's right. It's our CBS2 Pet of the Week. Now meet Bella. She's an eight-year-old Siberian Husky mix. She loves to go on adventures, whether it's a leash or in the car. And if you have other dogs, they say no worries. She's all about making friends. Now Bella has lived with other large breed dogs before. So if you want to meet Bella or any other of the wonderful pets at West Valley Humane Society, you can make an appointment. We do have a link. Just head to IdahoNews.com. Wow, beautiful eyes. Oh yeah, I love those staring at eyes. Him. Wow. Her coat's amazing. It reminds it me she's a little smaller, but we had a big Alaska Malamute to full yeah. bred. So uh, he a big was dog. a big dog growing up. Lots of fur to comb and to shed when it got hot like today. Yes, and yeah. lots of love for you know your lots licks. Yeah, lots yes. of slobber. <laughs> Don't forget that too. Yeah, <laughs> amazing dog. She's a cutie. So I'm sure she'll get snatched up quickly. Uh, all, right. all right, folks. Yeah, getting out this morning. Maybe you're gonna do a little dog walk. We do have mild temperatures. Southwest flow in places. You can see a ridge still in southern Idaho. There is uh, stormy weather up to the northwest of us. We're gonna see that band of shower activity dip into the west central mountains throughout some of the afternoon. So there's a chance for rain up north. Uh, the valley is going to be dry. We'll see a mix of sun and clouds. Uh, temperatures, though, with that southwest flow in place ahead of a front over the weekend. We're going to be toasty. Upper 80s, near 90 today for a lot of the valley. Getting into Saturday, more of that moisture trickles into southwest Idaho, so there is a risk for some showers tomorrow afternoon, maybe a storm. A lot of the coverage looks pretty sparse with future casts. We put it into motion. It'll be more widespread as we get into late Saturday, early Sunday. In fact, this is now Sunday morning. Mountain areas are going to be the real winners with precipitation, but it might be too much. Uh, too quickly. We're looking at a risk for potential flooding near some of the small creeks and streams as they could swell with uh, an inch to two inches of moisture uh, from late Saturday through Monday. Uh, so again, quite a bit of stormy weather. This is on Sunday. The front sw uh, sliding through the actual core of the storm system rotating through the gem state. It's a slow moving storm, so it's actually going to continue to impact our weather pattern into Monday, possibly even early Tuesday before the system is done. And again, the likelihood of widespread precipitation, it's there late Saturday throughout the day Sunday, still scattered showers Monday, Tuesday in the mountains. So if you're camping, it is a bit of a concern, of course, with some of the possible streams uh, and uh, creeks that could rise quickly. Uh, you want to avoid areas that have had recent wildfires, those burn scars. They could, especially the steep slopes, could have mud or rock slides as well. And of course, yeah, it's just kind of miserable if you're out with heavy rain camping. Maybe you skip it all together and do it next week. Yeah, maybe just think a little bit ahead. Sorry, you kind of yes. caught me in the middle of a slight yawn. A yawn. Yeah, we're still waking up this morning, even yeah, though it's a, a, a late 640 almost on your Friday. Yeah, if you're getting ready to go. Let's take yeah. a live look outside this morning from the News Talk KBOI and CBS2. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Beautiful view out there this morning. Let's get a check of what exactly has happened down there on the roads with News Talk Traffic's Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, how's it looking? Well, everybody getting along all right at this stage. Uh, quiet on I-84. We've had two problems this past week on I-84 in the Meridian area. One yesterday that caused a eight-mile backup at one point, and we had one earlier in the week. So let's hope that does not take place. Meridian, watch out. Dealing with some sun glare, of course. Watch your following distance. But not really any uh, holdups to speak of. Nothing significant yet. And away from the freeways, too. Pretty quiet. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Yeah, our fingers are crossed on that one. All right, thank you.
CB, when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question is more money is spent on this hobby than any other. All right, I thought I had some good guesses uh, in between the last time we guessed. And that was art, the art, collecting arts, a hobby, right? Oh, art, yeah. Some pieces of art, just incredibly expensive. Uh, so that was the one I thought. What was the other one I said? Can you remember? I thought I had the other one nailed down, too. I might have to think about it a little bit more. But Say, I was thinking underwater diving. Oh, okay. I'm trying to think of the expensive yeah. ones. Maybe ballroom dancing. Because getting there, the gear, ballroom dancing. Okay, yeah, maybe you're forking out lessons from, like, the greatest ball time Ballroom dancer of all time. Oh, or what I would give, Nate. All right. Sean okay. says golf. Yeah, that's yeah. an expensive Had one. a grandpa who was a golf pro. It is very expensive. I thought of video <laughs> games because everything oh, yes. costs money on video games, right? I, I'm with you on that one. Video yeah. games, they stack up quick. Jeff says skiing. Oh, yeah. Especially oh. if you're like a real ski bum and you've got to have the latest and greatest gear every year. I and totally it, get it that. It adds up a lot. Yeah, Worth certainly. It. All right. Kathy oh, says yeah. gambling. I guess that could be a hobby. Yeah. Yeah, I said sports gambling hobby? earlier. So, yeah, along the same lines, yeah. that certainly can get really expensive Oof. betting on some of those games. I cannot. I, I lose everything when I try to gamble. <laughs> so, I just, you know, just don't do just it, don't Sarah. Just don't even gamble. All right. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, still 15 minutes, share your guess on our Facebook page <laughs> or Twitter, and we'll reveal the answer at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News, a heat wave has the West sweating. The high temps that are expected to bring dangers and what may come with them. All right, 645 on your Friday. Welcome back. Local forecast this one for Meridian as you head out uh, today. Again, we're pretty comfortable this morning in the low 60s. We'll be upper 80s this afternoon. A little bit toasty out there. We are going to see a mix of sun and clouds move through today. Overnight, back into the low 60s. Some clouds, so still mild into Saturday morning. We do drop uh, tomorrow for our highs. We have more cloud cover, even a chance of an afternoon shower or storm. It's about a 20% chance, so not a washout of a day tomorrow, but temperatures are falling into the weekend. Thank you, Nate. Turning to fire season this morning, fire officials are giving their summer wildfire forecast for the West Coast, and it's not looking so hot. We're already four months ahead of where we should be. In Southern California, temperatures already soaring. Firefighters are asking neighbors to be prepared for fire danger year round and have an evacuation plan in place. We do have our carriers and leashes ready in case we have to evacuate. LA County Fire says they plan on getting more firefighters helicopters in rotation as Santa Ana wind season eventually kicks into high gear. Yeah, flames aren't the only thing officials are warning us about. Temperatures are going to soar in the western U.S. over the next few days. So places like Phoenix, Arizona, Las Vegas, Nevada and Palm Springs, California could hit around 110 degrees. Now their advice is do your best to keep cool. But Victoria Shaha in Las Vegas explains not everyone has that luxury. Some don't have the luxury to work inside in a cool environment, particularly construction workers like those working on the sphere. They have to get the job done. I spoke to a worker on a project in the northwest part of the valley. You won't believe how many of these he's drinking a day. I drink like probably 15 bottles a day. Besides his construction tools, Mario Lopez says there is always a water bottle in his hand. Every 30 minutes I drink one or two. The company he works for provides a cooler full of water for their crew. Still gotta, you know, get the job done. And with multiple breaks in the shade, he's able to get his work done. He says his work shift is now 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., with noon being the toughest hour. I got like three or four chairs, you know, to keep uh, cool. But there's always danger. I spoke with Eric Bandela, who is currently studying the outside workforce in the heat with Desert Research Institute. We found that the most affected population is those who has five years or more working for the same employee. He also found that women working outdoors were more susceptible to heat-related illnesses. Before this study, he was looking into the mortality rate for Southern Nevada when it comes to heat. The number of cases of people dying because of extreme heat Increase it for less than 10 when we start the analysis to over 50. So no matter how long you have lived in the desert, you should always take extra precautions because you may never know how your body could react.
Yeah, so they say if you work outdoors or perhaps have to do some work outside your home, you need to drink about seven ounces of water every uh, half hour. And I say that's the secret yeah, to that at least sounds, staying hydrated. That sounds really simple. Imagining myself out in 100 or oh, triple degree heat. I could, uh, I'm going to be downing all that cold water yeah. all hour long. And I commend all of our construction <laughs> yeah. workers who are out there working, especially on those roadways. Yeah, they should get on our shift, right? Just use lots of lights, I guess, yeah, and get I mean, out at 2, 3 a.m. and crank out your work day, and then you got the rest of the day to stay inside where it's cool. Yeah, or, or <laughs> sleep. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Well, I know yeah. one thing I won't be doing today, that is sleeping because it's going to yeah. be a beautiful day. Yeah, get out, enjoy some of the sunshine uh, on your Friday. Maybe take a, a shorter work day if you can. Your Adventure Weather Radar Network showing uh, we're quiet here in southern Idaho. There are some showers again at our doorstep northwest of us. Uh, we're expecting a little bit of rain in the northern mountain areas, west central mountains, Baker County today. Uh, otherwise, uh, the rest of us are going to be dry. That band of shower activity will continue to shift southward into the weekend and so we're going to throw in a chance of some stormy weather Saturday afternoon and evening late afternoon. I think for the valley, it's only about a 15 to 20 percent chance of a shower. So still a nice day tomorrow, a little cooler. All of us are going to drop Sunday. We have a cold front uh, working its way through. It'll bring some rain, possibly some thunderstorms uh, and continue a chance of some moisture into Monday next week. Big drop in temperatures for the valley. We do have some rain, hoping for a good quarter to a half of an inch of moisture in the in the Treasure Valley. Mountains are going to get slammed up north with lots of rain, buckets of rain. Back to 88 Thursday with sunny skies next week. Mountain forecast 72 today, 64 tomorrow. Again, so some rain up north today. Southern mountains are dry. All areas seeing a chance of some showers uh, tomorrow afternoon and evening. Might even see a little bit of flooding with one to two inches of moisture in the west central mountains, even the valley locations on Sunday into early Monday. Temperatures fall to just 50 degrees on Monday. 36 for an overnight low to Tuesday with some lingering showers. Might see a bit of a wintry mix, if not some snowflakes in the Long Valley Tuesday morning. Start to clear out as the storm pushes east. We'll see temperatures climb to 65 Wednesday, mainly sunny and yeah, comfortable and nice 75 finally Thursday next week. So enjoy the 70s yeah. today. 70s Thursday next week. Yeah, picture perfect. Beautiful day today for the yeah. mountains, but some evening nice. rain possible. Yeah, I'm in the northern mountain area seeing a little bit of shower activity this afternoon. Southern mountains are dry. Boise mountains are dry as well. No, perfect. Good morning to our friends up in that area this morning. Let's take a live look outside CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A beautiful sunny start to your Friday. Let's get a check of what's happening on the roadways with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Hey, Ron, how's it looking? Well, uh, minimal congested traffic at uh, some of the merge areas. I mean, very minimal. There's more volume coming on to ID4, for example, at uh, Meridian Road. Not uh, too much, 10 mile. All in all, very quiet starts all the way around, uh, away from the freeways. Volumes are on the light side. Still good. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a shortage of hot sauce. Say it ain't so. Why less sriracha is going to be on store shelves. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Welcome back. The average price of gal gasoline is hovering right around $5 a gallon nationwide for the first time ever. That's according to AAA. Now, California has the highest average sitting around $6.40 a gallon. Gas prices, they're up 25 cents in just the last week and have soared $1.90 from just a year ago. Meanwhile, here in Idaho, that average or our average rather is sitting at about 508 a gallon. That's up 24 cents from a week ago. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up still going to be Costco. It says you can find it for 4.93 a gallon there. Well, this will hit home for all of our hot sauce lovers out there this morning. Another shortage is hitting our shelves and Cadness Crone explains why Sriracha hot sauce may be a bit harder to come by. Like salt and pepper, you can put on almost anything and you still enjoy it. Not too spicy. The unique chili pepper taste of sriracha is a favorite among those who like to add a little spice to their food. But finding the green capped bottle with the rooster on the front might soon be a challenge. 
Hoi Fong Food, which makes sriracha, recently announced in a letter it's temporarily halting production of the hot sauce and its two other condiments due to weather conditions affecting the quality of chili peppers. The company had already been dealing with a shortage of chili pepper inventory. We found bottles still on the shelves at this supermarket in Alhambra, but the store manager anticipates not for long. Right now, a lot of people are asking to me about the sriracha. I have one customer. He have he owned the the sushi restaurant. Uh, he worried about that. You know, we try our best to stock up and make sure that you know all the customers are fed, even with the shortage. Over at Number One Kazoku in San Gabriel, they're already considering different hot sauce substitutes if they can't get their hands on what they need. For us, we're not worried yet because we only use so much. That doesn't really impact our sales per se. But I mean, if they're gone for a very long period of time, I think we probably have to stick with the alternative. And if that doesn't work, then it's going to be a little more hard to find any other substitutions to please our customers and clientele. The company didn't immediately respond to our request for comment. Victor Tran said he hopes the shortage doesn't last too long. Actually, I'm low at home right now. <laughs> I haven't been to the market, so I, w I wouldn't know, but I hear about it. So maybe I might run to the market, try to snag a couple of bottles, bring it home. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. The yes. question is, more money is spent on this hobby than any other. All right, so many good guesses out there. I thought of hobbies uh, like maybe even gambling on sports yeah. or maybe you're collecting art. Yeah, I'm like video games, it okay. has to be. All right, the answer. The answer is actually gardening. Really? I, okay. I spend a lot of money, it makes sense. That All right, guys, sense. have a great day. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.